first out of the barrier from Apollo 11, Desert Bow. On the outside, Velatari and Irish Whip being ridden along in the early stages to try to get up into a good position. Gun Cinder settled back second last, soon after the start, and Gold Brick racing unkindly at the post the first time is absolute. Out of the straight now, and Desert Bow is the leader by two and a half lengths to Velatari, now three. Three away Irish Whip, a length and a half to four guy racing on the outside of Apollo 11. And surprisingly, Gun Cinder's another length further back, and then three or four away last is Gold Brick. They run along the side of the course and Desert Bow is off with a big lead. He's out about eight or ten lengths now from Velatari. Similar distance to Irish Whip, another five lengths further back then is Fall Guy. A little over a length for Gun Cinder racing outside Apollo 11 as rain starts to fall at Randwick. And three or four lengths away last is Gold Brick. They are really making this a test of stamina. Desert Bow out 10 or 12 lengths in front as they race past the 1500. Velatari second, six lengths away Irish Whip in third place. Another four to Gunfin moving up alongside Fall Guy. A little over two lengths further back, Apollo 11 second last and a length away at the tail of the field, Gold Brick. Desert Bow's lead is the best part of 15 or 20 lengths as they race over towards the 1200. And there he would be probably 20 lengths in front of Velatari. About five or six lengths further away then, Gunfin moving up to go past Fall Guy. About a length further away, Irish Whip, and on the outside of him, Apollo 11, and a length back last is Gold Brick. They're at the 1,000 metres turn, and Desert Bow is still well clear, having a lead of about 15 lengths or so from Velatari. A length and a half for Gunfin, moving up within a length and a half of the second horse. Three more to Irish Whip on the outside, Apollo 11 starting a run, and Gold Brick dropped back last again with Fall Guy. Inside the 700 now, Desert Bow starting to get tired, but still led about 8 or 10 lengths from Gunfin, moving up to go slightly away from Velatari. A length and three quarters further back, Apollo 11 making ground, and they were followed by Gold Brick on the outside of Irish Whip, and Fall Guy was last. On the corner now, and Desert Bow getting very tired, will lead into the straight clearly, however, about a length and three quarters or two in front of Gunfin, two lengths further back, Apollo 11, at the head of the others, Gold Brick over the rise now, and Gunfin quickly raced to the lead, but Apollo 11 out after him immediately and they're in front of the 200. Apollo 11 on the outside and Gun Cinder's nothing between them. Hands and heels. Apollo 11 took a narrow lead. Gun Cinder's fighting back with great courage. There's nothing between them. Apollo 11 got his head in front. He's holding Gun Cinder and Apollo 11 is just too good. But what a way to go for the champion. He's only been beaten in the last 100 metres. Apollo 11 beats Gun Cinder. Desert Bow four lengths away third and then goes Brick Paul Guy Irish Whip and last is Velatari. Well, he's too good. A great horse to follow 11, and gave Gunson a couple of lengths out from the top of the straight, but has outstayed him, although it was only really in the last 100 metres of the race that uh, he asserted his superiority over Gunson, who raised another, uh, well, I'll say, um, heart-lifting effort with about uh, probably 50 or 60 metres to go, and looked as though he might even pull the race out of the fire. Ah, uh, well, that's four in a row to a follow away, uh, Desert Bow uh, and uh, Gold Brick. Number one second, Gun Send, owned by the Gundawindi partnership of Mrs. Bishop Curry McMicking and uh, his tip off. Trained by Tommy Smith and written by Kevin Langby. Well, you can imagine what it would have been like if he had come in after the running of the Elizabeth Stakes, and it was hard to determine. Uh, the acclamation is for the winner, Apollo 11 and Johnny Duggan, and for the beaten gun sin, the most shaken man, uh, Kevin Langby, who looked visibly distressed as he brought uh, gun sin back to scale. Officially third was indeed number six, Gold Brick, written by R. Uh, Quentin. So the confirmed placings are two, one, and six. Ken, I've never been so disappointed in my life. Me either. I'm absolutely flattened. I just feel like the floor has fallen out of the box. I've never wanted a horse to win a race so much in my life before and yeah. probably never will again. Yeah. But as you said, <laughs> gee whiz, wasn't he gallant in defeat? Ah, yeah. You know, for about 30 or 40 metres after the other horse drew level, yeah. he stuck with him. He did. Uh, he made a follow 11 fight every inch before he was able to get the better of him. But you could almost... You could almost read old Gunston's mind, couldn't you? Uh, uh, you know, there's much as to say, well, you haven't got any beaten yet. But I'm going to try my level best until you do beat me. See, I'm disappointed. Oh, my. Anyway, that's another race over, and that's Gunston gone by the board. But uh, although Gunston has gone by the board, it's going to be one a hell of a long time uh, before race goers ever forget his name.
and a long time before I'll ever forget him too. All right, he's posing at the moment, <laughs> Gunning, uh, for a battery of cameras down in the birdcage enclosure. And Claire Dinkum, you wouldn't think he'd uh, been the uh, 2,400 metres. He looks very good. And uh, he's quite an actor. He's still posing. Correct weight. Correct weight, Julie notified. Standing race horse, and despite the fact that Gun Cinder's lost, he has gone down very gallantly to one of the best horses we've seen come across the Tasman for, well, probably 10 or maybe 15 years, and he might even be one of the greatest ever to do so. Uh, his wins here have been of superlative quality, Apollo 11. And today, although uh, he tracked guns in fairly closely, he was still giving him a couple of lengths start from the top of the straight. Uh, he was very dangerous to gun send at 200 metres to go. He drew level with about uh, 100 out, and then after a short struggle, he got to the front. Guns in very nearly drew level with him again, about 50 or 60 metres back from home. But Apollo 11's superior stamina has carried him the day, and he was coming away on the line to beat the gallon grey by half a length. But despite the fact that guns in has lost, he has again given his all in the, in the struggle to, to get to the line first, and I don't think that he is in any way disgraced by having uh, fallen to this great horse in two successive races. The people are standing around to uh, give guns into ovation. He's even being clapped by the owner of the winner and uh, John Duggan, the jockey, who rode Apollo 11. And guns in, if he had any knowledge of this, need have no fears that he has the admiration and affection of every race car in this country. Apollo 11 is a great horse and there can be no doubt that he will win many, many great races from here on. He is an ideal stayer. He follows any sort of pace without undue effort and he can unleash a, almost a devastating sprint at the end of any distance apparently gauged on his Sydney Cup win here on uh, Monday and his uh, success again this afternoon and he's being decorated with the Queen Elizabeth Stakes ribbon at the present time. So Gunnarsson departs the scene. I suppose it is a bit ironic and sad that Gunnarsson walks off down the race towards his stall just as his victor is being decorated with the purple sash. But as I mentioned, Gunnarsson has not lost any friends at all by his wonderful effort here this afternoon.